Hello everybody. Okay, so today we are going to talk about putting together a quad chopter, a reasonably cheap one, and we are going to use this particular frame. And the reason I'm thinking about this particular frame is because if it is a new build, now for those who have built before, it's a completely different story. Okay? For those who have built before, it's a completely different story. This is for guys who haven't built before, are thinking about building, would like to be able to build, but want to be able to do it pretty cheap. And that's how I, that's how I started off, trying to do it, it was pretty cheap. And I still do, to be honest with you. Let me just see if I can adjust this. Oh, very slightly. There we go. So, what we got here is a, uh, it's a quadcopter phone. And you can buy these for around about $15, about £13. Or from Banggood, for instance. I'll put one up on the screen there. Uh, the reason why I went for this, in particular, the reason why I went for this is because you can buy much bigger frames, okay, and you can buy smaller frames. You know, you can get the ones that will only handle up to five-inch props. Uh, you can get, you know, three-inch prop frames and everything. But if you want to build something and it's your first build, I would suggest that you get something where you've got some space to build with. And um, what I mean by that is, let's take this. This is this is the same frame, okay. And what I've given myself here by building with this particular one, and I'm putting the formal coating on. These sides have been done. As you can see, it's nice and shiny. Uh, but what uh, what I've given myself with this is, I've got plenty of space for the camera. I've got plenty of space for my power distribution board, which is underneath there, and then my flight controller on top of here. And when I take the top off, I've got room, you know, there's, there's cables there. They're not all really short because they've got to fit into this very small space and that can be quite intricate. And on your first build, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be enough of a challenge without you trying to set yourself up for the maximum challenge. So I'd suggest something like this. This is what they call a H frame. And because uh, it looks a bit like a H. I don't know if you can see that like that. Like a H. And because it has these two, the, the, the very bottom plate, and then your legs will go, or your arms, whatever you want to call them, will go here, and then the top plate, you get a bit of space there to be able to put a strap. And that means you can put your battery on the bottom. Now, some people prefer the battery on the top, some people prefer the battery on the bottom. Sometimes it's just down to where you can actually fit it. And on this one, uh, you can get a, uh, a nice 2.2 amp 4s if you're going to go 4s uh, zippy compact on the bottom which is great i'd suggest you know really going 3s first but um so this comes in a, the kit form obviously i'll put the image up there and as you can see you get all the bits and pieces and uh, the only bit i don't see in that kit is this piece here um, but you do if you look at this other image here you can see that you, you get it on top and that's where you'd you can put um, oh, this would sit on here where these holes are you get some some rubbers and then uh, and that would sit either like that or like that and then you can place a camera there if you wish like a, um, uh, like a run cam 2 just for instance a run cam 2 if you wanted to me personally I wouldn't even bother with the camera to start off with I just get myself um, you know, a little camera that I can have in there and, um, and have it protected because if this is your first build chances are you're going to crash and even if you don't crash it's still nice to just be able to protect your little time and monetary investment so so yeah so this is a carbon fiber frame and you can put the um, know, multimeter on there if you want to do continue continuity test and you will find that it beeps so we've got a carbon fiber frame and um, when we build this, as you can see at the moment on this one, I've got a the wide fitting in here for 
let's say this particular run cam, this is a run cam house, this is a CMOS, but if you want to try and avoid jello, I have to stick a CCD in, um, just because of the way the shuttering works, and we'll, when we cover the camera, we'll get into that anyway. Uh, and I've done a previous video on about how to um, how to uh, restrict or remove jello in your in your video. So yeah, so a nice and cheap frame. It's pretty light. It's not the lightest. I mean, I have a, another frame kicking around here, but it's much smaller. Ah, here it is. It's much smaller. Let's pop that out of the way. And I'm not going to get it all completely out, but in here I'll pull out one half. This will take up to a seven inch prop, but it's a lot smaller. I think that is five mil, but and it is quite it's a quite a lightweight frame, but this is a lot more expensive frame. I've not even got around to building it yet. Let me just put that back out of the way. So yeah, so the reason why I choose this is it's got five mil arms, so if you are going to um, bump it around, now I don't mean bumping around as it'll take it up. 100 feet up into the air, spin it around, have it zooming down at 70 mile an hour, then it's going to be okay. It's not. Okay, you may not break the arm, but you'll probably rip. You know, you're probably going to rip parts out, you're going to damage it, you're going to, you know, it's just going to mess it up. It's, it's, um, regardless of how cheap it is, you still want to try and take care of it. Me, I prefer to go for control over just throwing the thing around. Get the control first, learn the control, learn how how its own characteristics behave your particular build. Because every build is different. A lot of them are going to be quite similar, especially when it comes to the wiring. But we're going to get through the wiring about how you can um, eliminate a lot of noise in your signals and bits and pieces just by techniques of wiring. And, uh, and yeah, let's see if we can get you up in here. A little quad. And I tell you what, you know, there's nothing more satisfying than building your own and getting it set up and flying it and having that enjoyment of, you know, you know what you've done. And, um, and of course, if anything does start playing up, you know what it is. You know what to look for and, um, and you know what it is because you've got the intimacy with building your own that you don't get when you buy something. When you buy something, it's all pre-done. All you got to do is, you know, is, is fly it. But when you build it for yourself, you get that intimacy. You can take that time and that um, and learn that process along the way, and it's much more fulfilling. And I tell you what, you know, against the the store-bought stuff, building your own is better. I think you can ask any of the guys out there about building your own against store-bought. Unless you know, if you're going to spend two thousand pound on a DJI. Uh, that's different. You're not going to be spending two thousand pounds on this, but still, for your for your um, satisfaction of flying it and building it, you won't get that from a DJI, and you'll always be stuck with DJI, DJI, the DJI. Not saying that that's such a terrible thing if that's what you want to do for commercial purposes, stuff like that. But for those who are just going to want to get into the hobby, or just want to build for yourself. Um, you know, this is this is the way to go forward. This is really the way to go forward. So, just for that's it for the start of it. In your kit, you know, you're going to get all your, 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 your bits and pieces. And what I'm going to do is off camera, I'm going to put this together. I'm going to show you what it looks like off camera. And the only there's only going to be like maybe one one bit that I'm going to I'm going to do is I'm going to put my cables through like I have on here. I'm going to pump these two plates and feed them up so they come up through the section here and then connect into my distribution board so i don't have the wires running out the back here and it helps keep them quite clamped there not too terribly tight as you can see they move so nothing's cutting into anything and there's enough on there as well for anything to connect there without being a problem but that's how i do mine and i make sure that i put my strap through as well and i have these bits of um, padding on the bottom because this means that even if the on these ones let me see on these ones, yeah, the, um, the nuts are actually built into the frame, as it were. The thread for you to keep, um, screw into is built into the frame. But you're, you may find that if, you're, um, if your little bolt's a little bit more extended and you put a battery on the back here, it may 
um, sometimes look like it may dig into the battery so I put this padding on here so it clamps it all nicely to the padding and it is slightly foam so you can put a nice a good tight connection there and the battery does not slip or move at all which is absolutely fantastic and that just builds that into it then which is really good and you won't lose this because it's not very easy to come out and if you leave it strapped like that it's just not going to happen at all so that's the start for this video um, I can't if there's anything to do in the build that I think is worth pointing out um, I'll point it out you can imagine now if you've got little short bolts they're going to go from the bottom up into these and the longer ones are going to be for your arms now again you know you're going to have longer ones to put through these because this is uh, five mil arms and these on here are three mil arms I did start off with five mil arms I found that I wasn't particularly crashing to do any real damage or anything like that so I ended up putting my three mil arms on because the difference in weight these are 36 grams each no 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 I, I, maybe I've got that slightly wrong but I'll tell you what I do know that I do remember correct out of it is that there's nine grams difference between the three and the five millimeter arms so you're nine grams lighter with the three millimeter arms and overall that's 36 grams nine times three four is 36 so that's 36 grams lighter and when it comes to your builds like this you know every gram is counting every gram is counting so that's it just for this bit this is um i just wanted to go over why i'm choosing this particular frame um and we're going to say again one it's carbon fiber it's nice and rigid uh, it's cheap it's cheap and that's very important because if you are going to break it hey just just, just damage a cheap frame uh, much better to, to replace things on those uh, it's got the five mil arms for starters so that's good just to get your confidence up and you're quite happy that you can handle uh, it and um, you know you're not bashing it about and uh, and it's a H frame it, that being the H frame um, it, you know if you see a lot of them they could be straight X's and they're gonna be, they're gonna be pretty nimble boom 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 pretty pretty nimble but this one gives you a little bit more stability and it's a little bit bigger a little bit uh, higher than a lot you've got a lot more space in there for putting your bits and pieces you've got a receiver to go in there you've got video transmitter you've got your camera you've got your power distribution board you've got your flight controller uh, if your flight controller has got built in OSD that's great or you might even have a separate on-screen display so all these things are going to fit in and you've got to wire it together and so it's good to be able to have a little bit of space on your first build to be able to do that rather than trying to compact it into something which is the body of this it may have seven inch on here like the other frame i just showed you but the body size for it is half the size okay and if you've got to build by a stack you might find you're uh, spending out more on a stack as well because we can put the ESCs on the arms here which is quite nice and pretty chunky so again that's the reason that i would suggest buying something like this choosing something like this for your first build and after the first build different you have a lot better idea of what it is you're doing what you're getting yourself into but for the first one i'd go for it cheap but not particularly too cheerful um, enough space for you to get around it have a look around it and um and yeah and it's still made of carbon fiber okay right i'll see you in the next one thanks for watching guys